This is Snake. Snake, this Colonel. is Roy Campbell. Colonel, it's been a long time. I hope you are well. I, I, I do what I can to get by. Well, I hope you understand I wouldn't be reaching out to you if there wasn't something grave to talk about. Looks like there's been an incident at Shadow Moses. Shadow Moses? Your mission is to find out which of the card-driven games from GMT is the best. But, Colonel... Everyone knows the best card-driven game from GMT is... More about that later. Find that out. Perfect. And we might have our answer to who are the Patriots. What is the la le lu le lo And yes, I'm aware there's an IP game coming out for this, this year, but let's have some fun. Perfect. That's right! Today we're taking a look at which one of these games is the best. Is it Twilight Struggle? Is it 1960? Or is it 1989? We are going to dive in right now. Look at what all three of these card-driven games... Ha I look like a golfer, not Roy Campbell. Look at what these card-driven games from GMT have in common, what they have in different, and which one, if you're going to be able to find one, should you get, because they are all such an interesting historical look. So we're going to be diving into these three games, but first, let me give you just a little bit of talking, because you know what? On these Versus videos, I do talk a little bit more because it's more about comparing and contrasting. One of the topics I'd like to bring up in board gaming is emotions. No, I don't mean, oh, I hate everybody and flipping the table. I'm talking about emotions of do you actually get emotionally invested into a game? This set of games does something to me, to the insides of my emotions, where I get very, very invested because this is an era of history I deeply care about because it very much has ramifications today. And so learning and playing through the Cold War, through the end of the Cold War, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Nothing like that, right? It's phenomenal. And then obviously the election in the middle there. So these games do something for me emotionally and I really enjoy playing them even if they may look like just chits on a board. So let's dive in right now and find out what makes, first of all, all three of these games great on their own, but which, if you're going to get just one, should you get? One thing of note is the name that is in common, and that is, in fact, Jason Matthews. He is the one that is in common across all three of these games here. But they're all featuring a different era. And look at this art. Now, that's just some old-school, like, DOS computer art on purpose. This one's a little bit more, hey, look, uh, much more kind of impactful art. And then over here, good stuff, man. Just see that wall falling, solidarity, all that sort of stuff, man. Fantastic stuff. So let's look at the boards of these games right now. Sorry, one more thing I wanted to point out before we got into the game too much is the three different types of rules here. Now, two of the types of rules are very classic GMT rule books, and that would be 1989 and Twilight Struggle. However, 1960 is a little bit more user-friendly of a rule book. It's more of a, hey, game setup, sequence of play sort of stuff. It is, in fact, kind of that war gamey style that you see in Twilight Struggle uh, in 1989, you know, 14-2.6 and all that sort of stuff. It is like that, but... It's kind of hidden a little better. Uh, they did a better job kind of prettying it up and making it a little bit more just uh, easy on the eyes. But I will say this. The rule books I used to hate for Twilight Struggle in 1989, they're actually really intuitive once you start to use them because it goes through, boom, here's the DEF CON status. Here's everything you need to know about this one feature of the game. So it is kind of interesting. They're kind of ugly and hard to get used to at first, but they're actually very, very help, uh, helpful once you start playing the game and trying to find rules that you need to quickly look up. Actually, before we get to the boards, I want to talk about the fact that 1989 does, in fact, have two different types of cards because there is a mini game in which you jockey for power locally. And this actually plays up the importance of people like Lech Walesa and all that uh, with the Labor Party in, or Labor Union, I should say, in Poland that really led the charge, you know, of changing things. But uh, then you have the cards that play just the same as Twilight Struggle with the number up here, the operations number, and then the event down here. Uh, they're either for the reds or for the blues, and you kind of see you know, the two sides that it plays on. But a lot of interesting, interesting history here that's so much more zoomed in because you're only literally dealing with a year, right? So as opposed to uh, all that time, you're dealing with exactly one year. So a lot of interesting cards there to take a look at. The art's a little bit better in this one, a lot more colorful pictures, a lot more kind of just uh, more tones to it and a little bit more shade. Let's take a look at what Twilight Struggle starts with right now. 
Here we are with Twilight Struggle. A little less easy on the eyes, but still pretty straightforward. You have the red or white events. These are ones for the Soviets or the American events. Uh, but basically the same thing. The operations number on the top left allows you to do things on the board. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Versus the event at the bottom. Now, you do a different phase in Twilight Struggle that involves picking one of these cards to be your headline, which means it's only played for the event at the very beginning of the round. So there are tons and tons of these. They go early war, mid war, late war. And then you have your scoring cards here, which are how you score points to see who has the most control. Uh, there are a couple different ways to win Twilight Struggle. There are a couple different ways to lose as well. But then you've got 1960, which is quite obviously the easiest on the eyes, right? I mean, every bit about this game is an upscale uh, version of a GMT game. Like, they just look so good. These these presidential buttons, that looks fantastic to show who's got control. Uh, different tokens here to show that you've got support from both states. The card-driven stuff is the same, though. It's... Uh, you have ones that benefit you and ones that benefit Nixon, but they also count for things such as these icons, which go into debates and uh, for the state themselves, as well as the points. And, and, and there's a lot more detail and a lot more intricacy involved, but there also are cubes in 1960, as well as these nice little, uh, neat little endorsement tokens. But there are cubes that go out on the board, and these are how you show you have support. Now let's take a look at those actual boards, and I'll talk about a few different mechanics. Let's start with the founder of the feast. This is Twilight Struggle. It looks like an old school computer game, something you would see almost in an educational thing, right? It's so uh, purposely flat where you have your spaces to put your influence and the Soviet's influence, how much the number is that that's, that country can hold for influence. You have all these control, domination, and um, presence points that you would get. Turn tracker and space race tracker up here. You uh, you can abstract the space race by throwing away a card you don't like to hopefully move up the space race tracker versus this pull and push tug of war point system here where if you gain points, say you gain two points, but the Soviets gain four, that'd be one, two, three, four. A neat little push and pull. You have the DEFCON status down here where if you cause nuclear war, you lose because, again, mutual assured destruction ensured that not only did you blow them up, they blew you up. Uh, military operations are required because, obviously, lots and lots and lots and lots of proxy wars going on during the twilight struggle of the Cold War. Uh, the different round track and all that sort of stuff. You're going to be using those cards to place influence out here, take away influence from the enemies, whether that be through a coup or a realignment role. Depending on the DEFCON level, though, you can't have coups because the world would just go to just over the edge. The powder keg will explode. Whereas 1989 is not about violence and war. It's about ideology, right? So you have things like the Tiananmen Square track. So versus the Chinese card, or the China card being played in Twilight Struggle, this is abstract here, where the Tiananmen Square track, where you see this, this kind of, these, issues with human rights going on and how do you want to cover that how do you want to be a part of that you know are the students dispersed are they arrested it's just all kinds of interesting stuff right i mean there's tank man cards uh you have the score track that works very similar down here the place is broken up though because it's the old soviet block so instead of that giant map of the world you zoomed in vroom, way tight into the soviet block of west germany austria uh you have yugoslavia um Where's the one that was Ceausescu? Um, Romania. Yes, yeah, so you have all these different places. Now, you notice there are a couple different things. These symbols have to do with that mini game we talked about and who can go there and etc. There are a lot of extra little rules that go into this, but it shows kind of these what the legend shows and what these spaces are for. Um, the rules themselves will kind of tell you all about that. Now, the USSR stability track, this is kind of a, a little bit of a asymmetrical thing. Uh, communist in-game scoring bonus is here versus yours. So you're you're trying to get freedom. You're trying to have the wall fall. But I mean, it's it's got all things like that. You know, the solidarity legalized and all these sorts of little things that were so important during that last year of the Cold War. But uh, it plays a little bit differently. Yes, you're pushing and pulling for influence. You're trying to get your influence out there and pull their influence off. Uh, you have power struggle results here that are not. Again, you're not fighting. There's absolutely no kind of fighting in this. But it's more of a is it um, is your idea winning out? Are people seeing the freedom that your side is offering versus the power supposedly that the other side is offering? Which is why you have these writers' unions and the uh, you know the Polish Pope obviously is important and all this sort of stuff. Um, you have you know all these little things you know the 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 church spaces, the elite spaces, which things like the uh, the Communist Party, etc. Um, all of the important things in which that led to the fall of that Cold War wall and which side of it you're going to be on.
Here you have the best looking board of the entire series. My goodness, this looks good. Now obviously the spacer is a little bit bigger because you're gonna put cubes out there. But you have these cards down here that you can put your prevention events, debate events, election day events. You have um, these kind of little abstracted things, Greater Houston Baptist or Ministerial Association. You see where you know the electoral votes. If you own, if you control the state, you get that many electoral votes. I think there are some that might split, kind of like there are in real life. Um, you see, kind of the the Republican and Democrat states that are out there. They have the symbols on them already. You see, kind of uh, uh, the way this this is just very interesting. How you have the momentum track, phase, turn track, all that. It still plays the same way. You're gonna play a card. You're gonna get the points. You're gonna hopefully put out influence. You actually have a Kennedy and Nixon on the board though, so you're campaigning physically in certain states. And when you're in a state that you campaign in, you get a certain bonus for that. So it's nice to have kind of these. Um, these issues to talk about. Now you can you can make issues of the debate too. So we're going to talk about defense or the economy, kiss right, or civil rights. You know you're going to talk about these three huge things that were going on in 1960, and hopefully you and your campaign can jockey enough support to make you the president of the United States, which is the final goal of this game. Who has the most electoral votes at the end of the game to win the presidency? Of interesting things about the debate. So you'll be saving these cards to have this mini game that is essentially trying to get your side to have the issues placed on it, uh, which is interesting to win these debates, which are gonna award you four state support cubes, uh, then, then three, then two. So if you're the one who wins the debate, you can take those cubes up from that issue and place them out on the board. Then last but not least, you're gonna have the election day, which is you deposit any bonus cubes you have, determine an initiative, and then you yeah, do the election day events, find out who wins. But the push and pull of these mini games, and not to mention I wanted to show you in here, some of the media things that you can do. You can go and advertise uh, with the media and get an endorsement from a newspaper, which is pretty great um, to see in that city. And then you, can, you have to actually spend your points to move as opposed to just um, being kind of omnipresent a little bit. So you can advertise in regions, which is cool. So there's a lot more kind of um, knacky, interesting push and pull that really feels like you're doing more in 1960, which makes it a great game because it feels like you're actually on the campaign trail as opposed to kind of more abstracted uh, from Twilight Struggle and the others. So this is a very, very, very good game when it comes to really feeling the push and pull. It's It feels modern. It doesn't feel very kind of dated or aged, even though it's got this kind of nice classic look. Definitely um, check out 1960 as well, even though we're going to talk about the winner at the end of this. Now remember those moments when you're playing Blitzball or uh, whatever the card games are called in Final Fantasy VIII and X and such. Um, that is essentially what these power struggles are going to be. So instead of just a scoring card giving you points, when a scoring card is played, you're going to have this power struggle mini game, which is that second deck of cards that I showed you. The point of these power struggles is you'll notice there are suits on this, right? Suits and numbers. So you're going to play these cards and basically you're going to keep playing them until you are you can't play in suit and you end up having to uh, lose basically the attacker will play a card and you have to match its suit or you can play your leader if you have control in that spot or you can play the tactics fail card which is kind of a counterattack sort of deal um essentially the aftermath will determine who wins the power struggle then there are two die rolls First determines how much support the loser must remove from the country, and the second determines how many victory points the winner receives. So a lot more detailed way of doing scoring when it comes to 1989, which makes this an excellent addition to this series because it takes kind of the, the basic things that you did in Twilight Struggle and really elevates them and gives you a little bit more power and a little bit more feeling of the actual push and pull in those last few months and last few years of the Cold War when it came down to, hey, this thing's drawing to an end and one side is going to come out victorious it's no longer just uh, living in shadows anymore so 1989 does a really good job of bringing that evocative feel of marching in the streets and taking to the streets to really demand freedom colonel i've come back with the data snake we're not even in character anymore you're dressed as me sorry anyway so that is all three of these games that's twilight struggle 1960 and 1989 so as you saw we broke it down based on the way they look Pretty similar, except for 1960. It's got cubes. The way they feel, right? They're all GMT board games with that kind of GMT card stock. But the way they play. Now, yes, they do all use that card-driven mechanic. And you might first think, oh, these are just interchangeable. But here is where these matter the most. 
the preamble to this lengthy video was all about emotions and gaming and what does a game make you feel maybe it's something emotive of memory because you had a wonderful experience with a lost loved one or something like that playing a game i've heard great stories like that maybe it's something you and your spouse played when you first got married or maybe it's something that you and your best friends used to play that you haven't seen in a long time but you have an emotional attachment these games are interesting because I've never had a bad experience playing them and it always brings me closer to the friends I play them with. But aside from that, the emotional level of dealing with the Cold War, Kennedy and Nixon, and then the falling of the Berlin Wall in 1989 is so powerful. When you think of people literally trapped across you know, this barrier for half a, half a century and then all of a sudden freedom. So seeing those faces and watching documentaries, I just listened to a fantastic uh, podcast called The Cold War, what we saw about all of the things that go on, went on in the Cold War, and it's just phenomenal stuff. So looking at this era of history is such a great, great thing to do in gaming. Now, yes, these games are pretty ugly in the sense. They're not the prettiest games on the world, but they're not supposed to be. They're almost meant to feel like uh, spheres of influence games on a map where you're, you really are the overlord running an army. But in this case, you're not running a physical army like Paths of Glory. You're running in a, a spy army, a network of information. You're trying to get your values and your information out there ahead of the Soviets or those capitalists. The idea is the person with the best values, aka the one who spreads their message the best, wins in all three of these games. That's what makes them so interesting. So yes, you're pushing chits around on the board. You're doing coup and recovery rolls. But what I love is the push and pull of the little nuanced rules. Now, if you're playing competitively, I should say competitively, if you're playing more seriously, there are little tricky rules that you have to abide by instead of going, oh, can I just take that back? For instance, you can lose when someone plays a card in Twilight Struggle that says, if you do a coup anywhere on the board, it degrades DEFCON levels. And if DEFCON is two, and you forget that rule, and you accidentally do a coup in somewhere like Angola, which I don't think is a battleground state, and you cause a DEFCON deg degradation of one, you do lose the game. And that is what makes it so fun, because you're supposed to play by those tricky little intricate rules, and you're supposed to juggle and balance all this in your head, much like Reagan, Kennedy, Nixon, Johnson, Ford, uh, Brezhnev, uh, the other guys, you know, the ones on the other side, of <laughs> Khrushchev, and uh, uh, what's the guy's name who ended it, uh, who was, you know, Perestroika and uh, Glasnost, uh, what is his name, gosh, it's going to come to me here in just a second, Gorbachev, right, you have to think like they thought in a much more microscopic level, because it's a game, not a real life situation, so, again, you've heard me talk enough, that's enough about these games, you've seen them, you've heard them, you've done all this sort of stuff, at the end of the day, the pick that I'm going to pick, if I have to just have one of these games, is still going to be Twilight Struggle. Hands down, because it does such a good job of zooming out the entire Cold War. Now, yes, it is zoomed out, so you do miss some of the intricate details like you get in 1960 or like you get in uh, 1989. But that zoomed out feel, the space race, and uh, you know you have to worry about DEFCON, and you start seeing all of these events happen, like Ceausescu and all these crazy things that happened over the last 70 years, and you go, wow, I wish I knew more about this in history. Jason Matthews does a fantastic, and Anand Deguta, especially in uh, Twilight Struggle, did a really good job of going straight down the middle with these stories too, right? They did, they did a great job of not like tipping their cards. They don't, they don't editorialize any of these events, and that's what's really fun about it. You see them through the lens of straight down history, and you see what happened on both sides, and it's just a fun experience. So, you can still get Twilight Struggle, but if you can't find anybody to play it with due to whether it's quarantines or just the fact that you're not a two-player gamer, you can play it on the app, and the app is phenomenal. Now, that being said, 1960 and 1989 are fantastic finds. If you can get your hands on them, definitely, definitely, definitely go get them. Now, I do have to give an honorable mention to 1960 because it does use cubes, and it looks the best of all these, but that being said, Man, go get you some nineteen, uh, some Twilight Struggle right now. It's a phenomenal game. It's beautiful. It's emotional. It's just so much fun to have to juggle all those rules. So I'm Brian Drake, or Colonel Royal Roy Campbell, or Snake, signing off right now. Liquid Ocelot. Anyway, all that fun stuff. Till next time, I'm Brian Drake here on the Dice Tower. Follow me on Twitter, Instagram. Pardon me. It's the Patriots. The. Metal Gear Solid 2, come on. 
this is riding. Anyway, follow me on Twitter, Instagram at Dice Tower Brian. Until next time, we'll see you. Snake! Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.